Hey everybody, it's that time again. Got another delivery from AgriLine here today. Let's see what they brought us this time. It's a little bit more than a box of uh, shredded cardboard. Right at the bottom. Yep. Should be two of those. One for each side. Yep. The other one. And I hope there's a bit more. This is some washers and some 916 UNF nuts. Okay. Yeah, 916 UNF nuts. More 916 UNF nuts. More 916 UNF nuts. Yep, and in there. I hope. There are two gaskets. Oh, come on, I've got to put the camera down. Yep, it's a pair of gaskets for the hydraulic pump mounting pegs. Got an interesting little story to tell you about those. So, if you're in the mood for a story, Grab yourself a cold snack and a bag of pork rinds. Make yourself comfortable and uh, we'll begin. So, can you see anything missing in there? I didn't notice before, but I can see it now. So let's take a step back. This is a hydraulic pump. There's lots of different types of hydraulic pumps fitted into all the different types of tractors and hydraulic applications around the world. You've got swashplate pumps and gear pumps and radial pumps and variable pitch pumps, all sorts of different hydraulic pumps for different applications. But this is what's called a Scotch yoke. If you think about it in the simplest terms, all it is, is like a little flat four-cylinder engine. And when that shaft, when that shaft, and using a magnetic pointer is perhaps not the smartest thing I've ever done, but when that shaft there rotates, Running up the middle there, if you imagine as a little crankshaft, and you can just see a little piston there, and there's four of them, two on either side. So every time that crankshaft goes round, it pushes those pistons in and out of the little chamber, creates hydraulic pressure, which is piped out of the pump to the various outlets around the uh, the place and in that little hole there there's a fella called a standpipe not a stack pipe anyone who's listening it's not a stack pipe it's a standpipe and that is the outlet from the pump where the pressure comes out so this little tractor here is designed at around 2,000 revs, if just off the top of my head. I think it's supposed to put out about eight and a half, nine horsepower or something like that through the hydraulic system at about 2,000 revs, which in 1965 was enough to tip a trailer, 
to uh, drive simple hydraulic machines, push rams on things, lift stuff in and out the ground. That was enough. That was all people needed. Now, at some point, some genius out there felt that that wasn't enough. So, said genius thought to himself, what can we do to increase the pressure on this hydraulic system? And that's where the problem started. In said genius's tiny brain, the processes started going round and round and round, and he thought, I need more pressure because I'm using something that this tractor can't drive. What can I do? I can increase the revs. Hmm, doesn't make a lot of difference. Must be something. And then he thought, aha, what if I change the pressure settings? And that's where this comes in. This is a pressure relief valve. That is where the oil comes out, and that is a spring which governs the blow-off pressure. And on the bottom end of that spring is a ball which sits in a seat, and that is the pressure side. When the pressure inside the circuit reaches, in this case, about 2,800 pounds per square inch, it unseats the ball and oil comes out those little holes. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? It's also quite important. Right. Our genius decided that he would increase the operating pressure in this system. So he unscrewed one of these from there and put a bolt in instead. That's great. Now the relief valve won't blow off at 2,500 PSI and he'll be able to operate bigger machinery. Bit of a problem though. Pressure relief valves are in there for a reason. They're there to protect other components in the hydraulic system. So if you think about it, those little pistons flying backwards and forwards in there, pressurizing oil for all they're worth, so that somebody can tip a trailer. If the load becomes too much, what does it do? Blows off the valve and those pistons will continue to rotate and continue to reciprocate rather, but the oil just drains straight back into the bottom of the casing. Take away that valve and what happens? You've got 58 horsepower pushing those little pistons backwards and forwards and instead of it blowing off at 2,500 pounds per square inch, it can't. It's got to go somewhere so something else down the line is going to break. And that is where our problem starts. I don't know what this was done for. I don't know what was driving on the other end of it whether that had a relief valve in it, or it had an adjustable relief valve, or it had something, I don't know. But all I do know is that this particular kind of pump, the Scotch yoke, because it's only got four pumping elements, um, they do vibrate. They're not the smoothest running pumps in the world. Not like a gear pump or a multi-pin, uh, multi-piston swash plate or something like that, which are quite smooth. This these do vibrate, they're prone to vibration. And what is more, they're held in place by only two pins because they are designed to transmit only about eight and a half to 10 horsepower. So something somewhere is gonna break. And what do you think it was? Well, these are the pins that hold the pump in place. 
that's where the handbrake pivot fits and that's oh hold on it's a bit missing let's have a look at the other one that's where the handbrake fits on and oh it's broken on this one too yep if you take the pressure relief valve out you're just going to break something further down the line in this case those little pins which should look like that so there's a the handbrake and those are the mounting pins for the pump with the extra pressure from not having a relief valve it sheared them both off and uh, it's been done for quite a while because there was a lot of silicon in there uh, this one had a washer in there trying to hold it all together a washer sandwiched in there you can see where it's polished so uh, yeah that's what happened you mess around with your hydraulic uh, blow-off pressure and your safety systems and you break something further down the line so what I've had to do order a new pair get my gaskets and hope that the gearbox casing is all right where those bits fit through that's okay that's but whether that has wallowed out the hole inside of the pump I don't know yet so we may well be having to replace the pump on this too anyway hopefully that was uh, interesting to somebody um, I will be getting these fitted in the next day or so so we can see what's happened but um, remember the pressure relief valve is there for a reason and uh, take it out and you're going to break something else so anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.